let's get started. Um, my name is Kevin. Uh, just make sure that you're in the right spot. This is a spot for dashboard design tips. I'll be talking about dashboard um, design, info buttons, and toggle switches. And let's get started. First thing first, uh, please make your purchase decisions of any Tableau products and service based on existing features and services. This conversation, you know, may go well or not. It may be awesome or awful. It's too early to tell. So please make your purchase decision wisely. With that said, um, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for attending the session. And let's talk a little bit about myself so that you, we can get to know each other a little bit better. My name is Kevin, Kevin Wee. If we have any Mandarin-speaking people here, it's Huang Kewen in Mandarin. And there are several things I'd like to know about myself before we start the session. First of all, I've been using Tableau for more than five years. I'm currently the lead BI analyst at Discover Financial Services. I'm also a Tableau ambassador. That's just another word to say that when I'm not using Tableau at work, I use Tableau for fun to try to push the limit of the tool to see what it can do that's not commonly available at the moment. I'm also a Tableau visionary. That just means that I am very, very passionate in sharing my findings with all of you, and I try to do that every year in a conference. So with that said, let's talk about what you may get out of the conference. This is the agenda. I'll start with the demonstrations of a dashboard that filled with buttons. Then we'll talk about how you may find good icon libraries for your own dashboard development. I'll talk about a specific kind of button called icon buttons, and then a specific category of icon buttons called toggle switches. We will end the session with giving you all learning resources so that you could use them to create your own business dashboards as well. Sounds good? Great. Let's get started. By the end of the session, you should be able to do the following. First of all, you should be able to find suitable icon libraries that are available, um, readily available to use for you for dashboard development. You should be able to create custom shape icons with good user interface or UI for short. And you sh these icons, some of them should have good parameter interactivity. Last but not least, you should be able to lease at least three applications of button, uh, icon buttons in dashboard design. So with that said, please raise your hand if you have explained the same thing about a dashboard or a metric over and over again in the last couple of days. Like people just keep asking the same questions about a chart, a metric, an equation. Now raise your hand if you have had too many filters or parameters in a dashboard. Like people just keep asking for more, but you only have limited real estate in the dashboard, a lot of you. How many of you have tried to find good icons on the internet, but you always ended up with something that you're not sure whether they're proper or professional, right, in a business context? So today, I'll try to help you solve all of these problems. Before I demo the dashboard, there are two notes I'd like to give to you and myself. First of all, a well-designed dashboard button should help the target users. They should be easily used by them, but not bedazzle them. They shouldn't spend too much time looking at them. And the second thing is later, I'd like you to pay attention to the buttons. In this session, charts are not a hero, are the buttons that changes uh, the charts. We good? Cool. Now let's look at what can actually be done with icon buttons. I have published this dashboard on my Tableau public account, and it's currently publicly, uh, uh, publicly uh, uh, accessible to all of you. These are the three icon buttons that I will be demonstrating today. Number one, it's a hover button. So what does it do is when you hover your cursor on it, it will spill out an information about a dashboard or a chart. An example of use would be in the chart on the right side here, it has a fancy metric called punctual delivery rate. But if you hover your cursor over it, you will read the definition of that metric. 
So th this could be useful for all of those indexes, all of those rates in your company. The second kind of icon buttons that I'd like to introduce to you is called A-B switch. It lets you switch between setting A and setting B in the same chart when you click it. So here it tells you when you click it, it'll switch from B to A. And when you click it again, it'll switch back, so back and forth. An example of this application would be you can switch the X matrix between two different metrics. Currently, the X matrix for this chart is sales per order by category. When you click the icon, it will switch to profit per order by category. The third kind of button that I'd like to introduce to you is a special kind of A-B switches. It's called on-off switch. Basically, you turn on or turn off a setting of a chart or a dashboard by clicking it like this, on and off. It's pretty much like the light switch at your home. The example that I'm showing you here is sometimes when we compare the existing value with our plan value, like the target, like the forecast, we want to temporarily hide or show that forecast or that compared value. So with the on-off switch, you can accomplish so. I know that all of this is very overwhelming. We have a lot of buttons on the screen. But now let's take a step back. Let's talk about how do we actually get this icon buttons. Oh. On the screen here, we have two set of icons. I'd like you to spend about five seconds to think which one set, which set is better for a professional business dashboard. How many of you say the bottom one? How many of you say the top one? Awesome. We're in a good, we're in a good, we're in a good place. Oh, by the way, I'm not a graphic designer. I did not create any of these icons. But I do agree with you that the icons on the top are better than the ones on the bottoms. So what exactly that make them better? According to Google Material Design, the icons that um, could be uh, should be used in a software, or in our case, a dashboard. They should be simple in design. They should be easily recognizable. That means that when you step at the very far end, you can still figure out the small one, what do they mean, without the text next to it. And amongst the icons, they should have style consistency, meaning that the color should be similar. If they have any line in it, they, their line weight should be similar. Their thickness should be similar. They should look like they belong in the same family. So in the past couple of months, I have gathered about 26 icons that I deem they could be commonly used in dashboard designs. And then by the end of the session, you will get all 26 of them. OK, so stay tuned. Sit tight. Now let's get back to these buttons and what do they actually do. Let's compare these three buttons. They look so different, right? But actually, they're all coming from the same starting point. All three buttons are actually one worksheet. Like Each of them is their own worksheet with one custom shape mark overlap with a transparent shape. Um, for those who are not familiar with the term, a transparent shape is just a circle PNG file with zero opacity or 100% transparency. You can export it and then import it to Tableau. Basically, all of them starting with this starting point. There are just two marks overlap with each other with, the, with a transparent circle being larger than the actual icon. And of course, we have some text in the tooltip. What else did they have in common? All of them arguably have a better UI compared to a one shape mark um, icon button. So in this small icon here, this is just like one shape mark. So why do we need to overlay it with a transparent circle and everything? So you can see that usually when people create one custom shape icon, when you hover over it, do you see the very ugly black outline, right, making it very hard to read? And then when the second you move your cursor away from it, the tooltip text won't stay. It's just gone. But if you hover over my icon, 
you can move your cursor onto the tooltip, and when my hand's out, it's still up there. So in a meeting, it could be easy for you to demonstrate the, um, the dashboard. Last but not least, when you, compare, uh, when you compare these three icons with the very original icon here, when you click it, it will have a lot of like unrelatable uh, command buttons above it. It's just ugly and it's just confusing. They don't serve any functions here. But in my icon, when you click on them, not that there are no outlines, no ugly outlines, they're also very clean, doesn't have all of those command buttons. So how do we accomplish them? I'll explain that later. But with that, let's talk about their differences. These three buttons, one of the major significant uh, difference is that they have different informations in the tooltips. The first one is just tell you whatever useful information you want. And the second one, it tells you to switch to B or A. And the third one, telling you to turn on or off a dashboard setting. The last comparisons uh, between these three buttons would be what would happen when you click on them. For the hover button, when you click on it, nothing would happen. And for the AB switch, when you click on it, it won't change the shape, but it would change the text next to it and a parameter value. And then for the on-off button, it'll just change everything. So how do we actually create them? Let's go to my Tableau desktop, which you will also get the file by the end of the session. Here, this is what I call a proto button, the starting point of all three buttons. You can tell that it, I just use min zero as a placeholder to create the zero lines, and then I just place two custom uh, shape marks overlapping with each other. And to create that special kind of cleaner tooltip text, here are what I did. For show tooltips, I select on hover instead of responsive. So your tooltip will last longer. And also, I unchecked the include command buttons option so that it doesn't have those weird command buttons show up when you click the button. So that's how you create a cleaner proto button. So with this proto button, all I did was I changed uh, the circle to a transparent shape, and I hit all of those zero line, and I changed the shape mark under it. That is how I create the hover button. So it's very simplistic, very clean. All it does is just tell you one information, one information about the dashboard. And here you will see that I have apple and oranges in the, tool, uh, in the detail, and a lot of people will be like, why do you always have apple, oranges, pears, and strawberries in your dashboard? The thing is, this, even though the top layer is a transparent shape, when you click on it in the worksheet, sometimes it, sometimes it will still glitch out a little bit. Okay? So to prevent that, when I create the button in the dashboard action, I use something that I call highlight deactivation, or some of the data fam leader, they call it a false highlight. I make Tableau, when we click on that icon, we force Tableau to compare apple and orange. And because apple will never equal to orange, it will default to show all value, so there will not be any white highlights or black highlights on the button. So now the button seems very seamless, very integrable into your dashboard. Now let's look at some of the use cases for hover button. Other than showing the metric or the, defini uh, the metric definition or SQL logic or calculation formula, you can also show who is responsible for this chart or who is responsible for the metric. So that could be very useful. And sometimes when your dashboard has some data issue, you can also show the data issue in a red alert. And then if you have the link to the Jira ticket or Miro ticket of someone's taking care of that issue at the moment, you can place it in the tooltip too. So that when people use the click to go to URL function in the dashboard, they may directly access to the current status of that problem. So this could be a very useful case. Now let's talk about AB switches and on-off switches. They're actually very similar as I described earlier. For an AB switch, you just need to place what I call a flip formula 
in the text. For those who are not familiar with the flip formula, it's basically telling us if the current parameter is A, then the answer is B. If the current parameter is B, then the answer is A. With the flip formula in the text, we can know what would happen or what, which setting we could go to when we click it. And for an on-off switch, it's just building one layer above of it. Now in the text, it is showing you the current parameter, but we place the flip value in the tooltip. So now we know when we click it, it will turn off, but the current setting is on, and so on. And using dashboard um, change parameter uh, function, we could control, we can use the button to control the parameter, and then the parameter control the chart. Here are some of the examples. Like I said earlier, you can change a metric. In this use case, I'm changing the Y metric between monthly profit per order to monthly uh, sales per order by clicking the icon. Oh, by the way, for those who looks a little bit confused, basically this is a button. These are the title of the chart. I just create a space holder so that I can float that icons above of it. You can also switch between two breakout dimension. Switch between two breakout dimension. So practically with the AB switch, you can switch metrics, you can switch dimensions. These are practically everything, everything in Tableau. Regarding on-off switch, there are a lot of things in a dashboard that you can turn on and off. Here are some use cases. First of all, you can group or ungroup the line charts like this. When you ungroup it, when you hover over it, you read both the category and subcategory products. But when you group it, you would only show the total in category. You can also show and hide different target values like this so that you can read the existing bars clearer. You can toggle between different scale. It could be a truncated scale or a full scale. And if you can control one chart's scale, you can control different scales simultaneously. You can decide whether you want to sync the scales or unsync the scale. Like I said earlier, because today the heroes are not the charts, I have already placed the instructions on how to create all these charts in my Tableau public workbook. So do check them out, and they're all downloadable, and they're free. And if you have any questions about them, you're always free to ask me. With that, let's go back to the presentation. Remember I told y'all that there will be learning resources by the end of the session? Everybody take your phone out. Here you go. So in this QR code, it will show you the presentation slide deck, the demo workbook, the icon library, which is also free. And later, once we have the video available on Salesforce Plus, I'll also put it on my blog so that you may access it. Cool? If anyone zoom out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I would like to give you some takeaways. First of all, free icon libraries with simple, easily recognizable, and consistent design. They make good dashboard uh, icons. And buttons with good UIs should have a very clear tooltip, expanded interaction area, and no ugly highlights when you click them. And custom shaped icons, you could use them to reveal useful information of a dashboard or use them to control the setting of one chart or the whole dashboard. I'm sure that a lot of things I haven't covered, I encourage you to try them out, do something that I didn't show today, and come back next year so that you can share everything with us. With that said, I'd like to thank uh, Tableau and Salesforce for the talk invitation. I'd like to thank Discover Credit BI team uh, for the practice adoptions and a lot of rehearsal. I'd like to thank uh, Yamil and Aaron for the presentation debut in the Florida Tableau user group. And I'd like to thank all of these people and many of you for inspirations for all of these examples. So with that, thank you very much. I'm open for questions now. And do reach out if you have any questions.